Jerry DePoto runs the team. And Jerry, let's start with this theory here. It's one thing to come out of nowhere. Not that Seattle came out of nowhere, but it's one thing to be a team that, you know, you don't know that much about as far as postseason is concerned. The Hunty instead of the Hunted. And now they are the Hunted. So you're going to get everybody's best shot in 2023. That's sometimes a little different mindset for a team to have to deal with. An interesting transition for your ball club. Go there first. Let me hear. Yeah, I think our guys are really looking forward to it. They they got as much experience in, in that charge down in September into the postseason up in Toronto for what was uh, such an exciting series. And then th just a grinding three games with the Astros. And I think prove to ourselves that we can go play with anybody. And it's a young, upside, talented team we're putting out on the field. And, and we think there's, there's better baseball in front of us than just what we showed in 2022. Well, listen, you know, you brought in Wong. You made some moves as far as your ball club is concerned. You got a little more offense. You lost some, too, Hanager and everything else. But you made some interesting additions as far as 2020. Without going crazy, Hernandez from Toronto, without going crazy and spending $500 million, and, of course, you gave Rodriguez a lot last year, you made some interesting additions to your team. Thoughts there? Go ahead. You know, adding Colton Wong at second base, Teoscar at out in right field, bringing in A.J. Pollock to to really serve as as a stabilizer for us in left field to to pair with Jared Kelnick or Taylor Trammell. And, and then the next year, the next step forward for guys like Cal Raleigh and Julio Rodriguez and George Kirby and Logan Gilbert, uh, we feel like the, this is the, the best team that we'll have put on the field and, and should continue to get better because of age and upside potential. Uh, listen, you really should be. Now, you have tough travel anyway. This year, it's even going to be worse because you're only going to play a team that's close like Oakland twice. Anaheim's not that far, only twice. Now you're going all over the place with the schedule. This sometimes wears out the Mariners. They got the toughest travel in the league. I'm sure you thought about that. Let me hear. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm glad we have young legs <laughs> is the my, my answer. Nice. You know, we my take has always been if I get on an airplane, I, I don't care where I go. I, I have to work tomorrow. But these guys actually have to play nine innings and go out there and, and do a very physical job. So it, it does wear on us. We are schooled in this area. We've frequently, if not in 90 percent of seasons, we wind up traveling more than any other team in the league. And similar to the way we feel going into this season about our chances to compete, I think our team wears this as kind of a badge of courage. They, you know, they deal with it. They understand it's part of the landscape. We do the best we can with sleep and recovery and, and nutrition to make sure we're prepared for it. And just, it's one of those things. I, I joke with the guys. It's like Roger Craig back in the 80s with Candlestick Park. You know, make it your thing. And, I, and the Giants did, and, of course, they had some good home years for Craig. All right, how about Robbie Ray? A little worried about him psychologically after he gave up the Alvarez home run in the first game against Houston. Very, uh, There's very few players I've ever encountered who I would be less concerned with their psychological preparation or, or readiness than Robbie. It's, you know, he's so he's so level-headed. It's a, He's a humble guy who has accomplished – quite a lot uh, under the radar in his career. Cy Young Award, handful of really good seasons in Arizona. Uh, Robbie's a tough guy, and it's a really big moment that, that it, it obviously went the way of Jordan Alvarez, but I don't think Robbie spent his offseason focused on that. I think he spent his offseason focused on doing the things he needs to do to come in and, and deal. And what we saw in the second half of last season, particularly through August, was very much like what the Blue Jays got in 2021. Couple of young pitchers with, uh, you know, lots of extensive work last year. Kirby's one. Logan Gilbert is another. You don't want to, you got to be careful here. You can't get them hurt. How are you going to handle that come spring training with those two specifically? Jerry, let me hear. You know, specifically with those two, we're slowing them down out of the gate. We're, we're also going to do that with a couple of our younger relievers who, who had high workloads last year. But we have no intention of limiting their innings during the season, but we are going to slow them down in spring training, which is what we did last year with Logan Gilbert and, and starting him a little bit later than the others. And as the other members of the starting rotation build up to their, you know, their third, three, four or five inning outings, you know, George and Logan might be a step or two behind 
but we'll have them prepared to do that five plus inning outing uh, when their first start comes up in the regular season. You know, it's funny. He's very unheralded, uh, but he's an ex catcher who's done a very quietly, a very good job in Scott service the last two years. And very, he didn't win the manager of the year. He was in the top three, but didn't win. And he's very unheralded. How about a minute with him? Let me hear. It's kind of his personality. He's a, I've, I've known Scott a long time and, you know, back to back years as a finalist for the manager of the year, he's led us to 90 wins in consecutive seasons, which, you know, hasn't been a common thing around Seattle in, in recent decades. So I, I feel like we're in great hands. Scott is a very calm, unassuming guy. He goes about his business in a professional way. I, I don't think there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of fanfare around him, largely because we haven't been uh, recognized as a contender for most of the time that that Scott has has been in the driver's seat but these past two years and especially this last year I think raised a few eyebrows as to the job he's doing here with the Mariners right and again back to the original theme you know the extra team in the playoffs Houston in the division lots of travel and expectations a lot for this franchise to deal with there jerry that we're going to learn a little something about them once the year goes because you know everybody's going to want to beat the mariners and you know you're going to be a hunted team i think that's a very interesting theme with your ball club in 2023 it sounds like you kind of agree i agree and, and one of the things that has been generally common with with our team is you know, we feel like whether it's through graduating young players from the minor leagues or moves that we'll make in season, you know, the team that we line up with on opening day is probably not the team that's going to finish the season for us, you know, in the end, be it due to injury or acquisition. We're a pretty aggressive group. We want to get better. I think this is a team that's trending in the right direction. And, and we want this to be a long-term, sustainable winning franchise. Right. And, and we feel like we're set up to right. do that. Uh, good point. You know, it's not a one-year wonder deal. Two 90-win years in a row. Here we go. Jerry, we'll talk before. Well, once you get to spring training, you always come on. Thanks. Uh, good times and bad, DePoto. I always say that. Good times and bad. He does not bail out. Give him credit. Enjoy the rest of the offseason. We're seeing Peoria. Appreciate you coming on.